Hey boaters, we're back. Keith at Outboard Dad here, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to finish up these carburetors. Remember the two carburetors we rebuilt? How come there's three here? I'm going to tell you why. So don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide is for sale now on Amazon for $20. I'm still offering for a limited time. If you send me an email with proof of purchase at Keith at OutboardDad.com to offer you a free half hour session over the phone to help you with a motor you're looking to buy or a boat you're looking to buy or maybe a motor that you're working on. So why do I have three carbs here? You always have to do a good inspection whenever you're working on something. Just overlook it, make sure it's good. So we went ahead and put all the new parts in this and I was tightening up the cover here and noticed I found my fuel leak. Do you see that there? So both of these are cracked here and here. So maybe someone over tightened it, maybe water got in there and it froze and cracked. But fortunately, I always say you can never have too many blown up motors. So I had an extra 88 special out there with a carburetor on it and these are not cracked. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screws from this and we're gonna clean this bowl out really good and install it on here so we'll be ready to go. But there's one more thing. If you remember, the follower was also not good. And interestingly enough, my spare carburetor from my motor that I have sitting on my trailer that I got for a hundred bucks and was kind of a basket case, said the motor was rebuilt at one point. Don't know, but there's enough parts in there for it to be worth it. So we'll clean this out really good. It looks pretty clean, but check it out. The follower on this one is also the same as the follower. It happens on all of these Evan Roots, right? So what do we have? We have the replacement follower here. Notice how it's thicker because that little outside ring on it gets broken off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my old cover, put it on here, just to keep the rest of this carburetor clean. I won't crazy tighten down the screws just to keep it clean. And we'll go ahead and replace this follower. So this follower just takes a little screwdriver and there's an O-ring on the end of it, right? And that O-ring is the only thing that holds it on. So we don't want to lose it. Well, I got another one on this carburetor if I do, but I try to pry it off without breaking it and without losing it, without it flinging too far away. You gotta make sure you get underneath it real good Sometimes you dive the screwdriver right into your fingertip while you're doing this. Takes a few tries, maybe more than a few tries. And we roll this sucker off of here. And I am fighting with it right now. Finally got that sucker off. So there's the follower. There's the old one and here's the new one. So we can see how much thicker the new one is. So we'll put that on, put our O-ring back on there so we know that this is ready to go when we install it. So first I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out and then we'll put this bowl on here. We'll take this little fuel line off and put it on this one too with a new tie strap. So now we know why we had all that oil in the bottom of that cowling. So pretty straightforward, but I'm still going to inspect. So before we mount these, I'm going to show you what we're going to expect inspect on the motor to make sure everything else is okay as well. So we'll get this bowl cleaned out and put it on here, and then we'll show you how what we're going to check before we put the carbs on. All right, this is nice and clean now. Put our screws in here. We'll tighten them up. You notice from new, they put a little, see that little blue stripe on the threads? So from new, they put a little bit of thread locker or thread sealer. It's not really sealer, it's more like a thread locker. And you can feel it when you tighten it when it hits that. And that helps the screws from backing out. So we'll make sure this is nice and tight. We'll switch this fuel line over and then we'll go check out this motor. So we'll take a look inside here. We want to check a few things. I did take off, this is the tube that goes to the air box. And someone commented that that could also be leaking and of course there's oil right here because that's where it drains down to the bottom of the manifold so we're going to make sure that this is this is a little bit hard i might even get a new piece of rubber but we're going to make sure this fits on there all the way and put a a good tie strap on it then we have our bleed lines i went through all those just to make sure they're good we're going to clean this little area up a little bit get this on there with a tie strap 
All the other bleed lines look good. We don't have any other issues. I scraped the old gaskets off of here. We won't be putting any sealer or anything on this. These will just go on like that. And uh, so we'll get this clamped up, clean this area out, and then let's get these carburetors on here. Like I said, we just want to be sure we're not missing something. That's why it's good to just take an overview, make sure it's okay. I see my fuel line has a clamp on it because we have the fuel pump over on its side. It's not really connecting all the way. So I want to make sure that that's on there tight with a good tie strap. Also my uh, primer here, we're going to check that when we turn it on just to make sure that it's not leaking anywhere. Sometimes they leak from the top and sometimes they leak from this O-ring here. So we're going to make sure that that's functioning the way it's supposed to when we get some good fuel pressure in there. We'll make sure all of our clamps, all of our tie straps are on here. Make sure this is clean. I'm going to go ahead and flush this out too because I don't want any dirt to be pumped in there from, from leftover from this fuel line. So we'll go ahead and clean that out really good as well before we connect it back up. So we'll get this cleaned up and we'll get that cleaned up, get a tie strap on there and we'll get these carbs on. We got that all cleaned up in there. Got the tie strap on this vent tube that goes to the front cover. There's also a, another gasket around that cover we want to make sure is, is solid as well. May or may not be. We may have to order one of those. And now let's get our carburetors on. So we'll take a nice new clean gasket. We want to make sure that it goes on the same way that the old one did. There's a hole there that it has to follow. So we'll get a couple of these Allen bolts in here. I'm going to do the top ones first. The bottom ones I may fit in place too. There's a little nub out I'll show you on the bottom of the carburetor that kind of holds them from going all the way in. When it comes out straight they have to go in at this angle. As you can see it hits this little bump out here when it's straight on the uh, manifold. So let's see how many of these I can drop on the way in. I'm going to try and tighten one at a time. I got the top one because it has my follower on it, right? So let's go ahead. Now we did put a new tie strap. Now this one has the old tie strap on it, but it's on there nice and tight so we don't have to mess with that fuel line. We did flush it out, so I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get the first one on. I do like this Allen key that has the ball on the end of it because I can work it at a little bit of an angle and get the first one started. Then come over here without kicking the camera stand over. Get that one started. The two bottom ones will get almost completely snug. We'll get them close to where they need to be. Because again, if you try and tighten it all the way with the top ones, with those still sticking out, it's going to hit those little nubs on the carburetor. That's the technical term, nubs. Now, it might have made better sense to put the bottom one on first. It's just that's the one I grabbed first. So uh, it would be a little more tricky to get in there, but we'll figure it out. I also, if you remember when we pulled this apart, I was going to put the lower unit on so that I could see better to hook up my um, piece for my shift shaft. Eh, we'll figure it out. All right, so I'm going to tighten this up and we'll get the other carb on. Now let's see if I, uh, I'm going to wrestle with this one or if I drop any bolts. Probably should have done this one first, but I may be taking that one back off again. Still going to try and put all the bolts in and do it the same way. Also ensures that my gasket is lined up. Just took a little bit to get it lined up. So we'll put a few new tie straps on this and make sure this is connected to our fuel setup. Then we'll go ahead and get our, our fuel tank hooked up with our squeeze ball and we'll pump it a couple times to make sure there's no leaks before we finalize putting any covers on. So let's get that set up next. You want to be sure you use a good quality UV rated, even though it's under the cover, the UV rating seems to make these last a little longer. I did order some on Amazon. You can ask Brett because we started to use some on his boat and they just didn't hold. I'm sure there's a strength and poundage and you can look at these. I got these at Lowe's. They're the Utilitech, which I've had good success with. The other one is Southwire, so they're basically electrical. But I'm using this for fuel lines, we want to be sure they stay nice and tight. Or in the more technical German term, Gutentight. And we'll get this in first. Then we're going to clean up these lines a little bit here too. 
I don't, they're all oily from that, from that leak. So we have the bottom one here. Let me show you so you can see. So we have the bottom fuel line down here we're connecting, and then this one will connect on here, and then we'll make sure everything is ready and wrapped up to go. Unless I'm doing this upside down, maybe it goes the other way. I have to watch my video from when I took it apart. Maybe it goes like this. No, nah, it can't go like that because there's not enough room for that. So it definitely went like this, and then we tie into our fuel pump up here. So that makes more sense. So we'll show you here the one you can see a little better. Again, we flushed out all these lines. They're nice and clean. I'm going to show you a little trick for tightening these. I'm going to do it here on it. Everything is, is black in here, so it may be a little difficult to see. So I will show you up close. So once we pull it tight like that, we're not done. I want to make sure it's good and tight. So here's what I like to do. Take a little needle nose pliers, and then I grab the top of the tie strap here and twist it. You, did you hear that click or did the car go by? So I just got two more clicks out of that, so that is good and tight. So let me show you. I'll do it on something closer. So I'm going to take my tie strap, wrap it around, pull it tight. Now if you look closely here, let me see if I can get you in even closer. When you look closely here, you can see there's still a little gap, right? I can almost fit this underneath here. So I'm going to grab it with my needle nose this way and turn. Now, gonna, now listen for the click. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Maybe if I put my microphone right up against it. Hear that? All right, so we got that tighter now. I also got grease on my microphone. But we got that really tight now, so there's no way that that's going to come off of there too easily. It's nice and sealed. See, it, it still spins, but it's not pulling off. It's really tight. So it's a good way to, to make sure that you get everything the way it needs to be. So now we'll do this bottom fuel line. All right, so now we have our primer solenoid here. We've got all of our fuel lines hooked up. This is our oil line here, so I can cut it and put a bolt in it here. I don't want to be putting a bolt uh, right in this spot, so I'll figure out where's the best place to put it. I might cut it off back here somewhere and, and put a bolt in it with a, with a clamp. But if you remember, our primer solenoid got mounted on this side, so now we need to hook up our tubing to our carburetors, and this is where they get connected here. So you see on the top of the carburetor we have that little brass, so that's where I'm going to put each one of these hoses on. As you can see, I have the top carburetor off again, because in order to get to the primer, <laughs> should have put the bottom one on first and put the primer solenoid on. Oh well. Sometimes I have to do things twice. But as long as it's right in the end, that's what counts. Now we can't forget also there's a linkage over here that we disconnected. So once I get this buttoned up here, I will show you what we disconnected and how we reconnect it. So everything goes back the same way that it came off. Now a lot of people will say, is there any adjustments you have to make or anything? And sometimes there are, but a lot of times when it's cleaned out and done properly, is remember that follower was probably a big change and my guess is because it wasn't on there correctly or that it was broken that they probably adjusted the idle speed or the timing to do that and it wasn't probably wasn't a big adjustment and how do I know that because I've made that mistake before not knowing that the follower was the issue so we're going to inspect that just to be sure before we fire this up but let's get these bolts tight and then I'll show you this linkage on the other side. Then we can hook up our primer solenoid. Remember that gets mounted on the top. There's two bolts on the top of the, the uh, plate that goes on the front of this. But I'm going to hold off putting that plate in until we get the lower unit on because then I can still see inside there to make sure I have access to my connection for my shift shaft. Just check them all. 
you know, before you say you're done. They have, do have little star lock washers on them, if you remember, so they're probably not going to back out. But you just want to check each one. So now let me show you this linkage here. So right here we have our linkage, and that has to be connected, that we disconnected. And we just snap that in place. And now they work together. So now we can work the throttle back and forth, make sure. So it is just starting to touch it, right? So it's probably not in a bad place. It's right on the arrow where you start your timing. So we know that that's set up properly. Now let's hook up that upper primer tube on the upper carburetor. And let's pump some fuel in this, and that'll be the, the test for today. So it looks like I have the wrong clip for this, but it does look like the O-ring will seal off if I hold it, which means i got to hold it while I pump it. So let's see if I can't make a mess. I hear it going into the carbs. Bulb is getting tight. And my primer is on, so let me turn my primer off. I just saw it squirt. And there you have it. So we pressure tested really good, made sure our primer's set up right. I'm going to pop this off. It's probably going to squirt at me a little bit. Oh, not too much. And now these carbs are ready to go. How to fix warped plastic carburetor bowls. I'll show you real quick. This is off a V4 cross-flow motor. We pressure tested. We put the squeeze ball on. Didn't appear to be leaking, and I stepped away for a second. Sure enough, it was dripping. Then I could see the warping that the gasket was not getting closed right here in this spot. Let me show you what to do to fix it. We went ahead and took a sanding disc, put it flat on a plate glass, so as I know that's flat or any flat surface. So you can see it only wore away where the bolts are because that's where it is. We keep going until we get the surface flat and then it should be good to go. We'll put it on the carburetor, put it on the carburetor and test it. Continue sanding and you can see it's just starting to get some sand marks on this surface. We want to get a little bit on that surface and then we'll be done. Quick check. We tighten it up on the bowl and we make sure we can push, we can't push this in whereas before we were able to push it in because there was too much of a gap and that's how you take care of your carburetors. And now these carbs are ready to go. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And we look forward to seeing you out on the water. Have a great day.